This is the strategy inside everything. I'm Adam Pierno. All right, welcome back to another episode of the strategy inside everything. I'm really excited. We were already talking. We had to remember to hit the record button um, to actually record the conversation that already started. Uh, I'm excited to talk to today's guest, Reginald Cash. He's the CEO of Three Black Dot. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, Adam. We jumped right in. Hey, Reggie, before we get started here uh, on the conversation, um, give people a sense of kind of your career and a little bit more about Three Black Dots so they, so they know kind of what you've done so far. Yeah. Um, you know, I think if I'm talking about my career, I really have to go back to my, my college days, which are increasingly there's more and more distance between them and, and, and where we are now. But, Same here. You know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I went to school in New York and, you know, the thing other than my studies that I felt really, really passionate about during that time was really um, throwing parties. I was that, that guy who was always trying to get people together, uh, you know, running around New York, trying to rent venues that would allow, you know, college kids in and kind of throwing these throwing these parties. And, and, and that always, you know, sort of stuck with me. And I at that time when everyone was like going off to interviews and, and trying to, you know, going for these big fancy jobs, I thought I was going to be a promoter. I thought, okay, I'm just going to scale up this business and be a promoter because I love, you know, kind of that feedback that I got from those, from those kind of consumer experiences and people having a great time. And, and I really felt that that was a, 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 a pathway to, um, you know, create things that people talked about and, and had staying power and, and, and really help people memorialize their experience. And so I was always attracted to that. That was like the, the, the best high for me. Um, and then, uh, and then wall street called. And so I kept getting these, these letters in my inbox that were like, you know, we want you to come and interview for this. And that recruiting machine. And if you're in New York, it's like next level. We want you to interview for this. We want you to interview for this. You're an econ major. Come and interview for this. And I thought, ah, I better go on some of these interviews. But I always downplayed the mess. Like, <laughs> I like it. It was like, like well, I guess I got to go do this. I was like, my, my, my parents would be upset if they, if they knew that I was ignoring all of these emails. And I, I remember, I, um, you know, I remember I had an interview. I was planning this event and I had an interview the same day. And, and I was meant to be like running back and forth between like a graphic design flyer place um, and, and, and this interview in Midtown Manhattan. And so I was totally thought I was like going to go in and pan these things, you know, um, because it just wasn't, I was completely relaxed. It wasn't something that I had aspired to and, and, and really wanted to do. Um, I was attracted to the signing bonuses and the money that everyone's like these, these banks are paying. Uh, need, needless to say, I, 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 you know, got the job, <laughs> stopped party promoting um, and, and went into Wall Street. And, um, you know, I had a, I had a very successful year. I worked, uh, I, I worked for about 10 years at, um, some global banks, UBS and then, and then Deutsche Bank, um, and was having a lot of success there. And I, I, I got to a point where I really saw, um, Hey, you, you know, you're making great money. Uh, you have a career path. Everything is set for you. You can ride this out for, you know, 15 years or, you know, whatever it is and, and be totally good. And I got depressed. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What was depressing so, about it? You know, it, you know, and, and what I what I what I realized is that it, that it was it was so far removed from kind of any uh, any real sort of impact. Um, it was so far removed from any type of consumer experience. I should qualify when I say real impact, um, sort of a tangible impact that you're getting from. Um, you know, crafting an experience or having an impact on an end user. Um, you know, Wall Street is is about um, is me success is measured in how much money you make, right? And how, and and so uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but it, it is an abstraction from all of the things that really need to happen for that money to be made. It's it's spreadsheets and it's graphs and it's presentations and it's ideas. Um, and so it's a, it's a completely different, different path. And so, uh, I, I, I quit my job, um, you know, not because I was, you know, disgruntled. It was just like, you know, it's now or never. Um, and, 
and I, I moved, uh, I came out to the West coast where I thought, you know, a lot of entertainment and technology and things were happening. Um, and really, uh, you know, we're kind of say, Hey, you know, I have some money. I'm not looking to be, you know, to be paid. Uh, I just want to understand what the entertainment industry is about. I want to understand what the technology industry, and I was just doing consulting. Um, I, I think I can add a little bit of value here. I think I can do things here. And, and um, I started consulting for a company, three like that. Um, and, um, and, you know, after a little while they, they pulled me in and, you know, I, I and said, Hey, we think that, you know, you have some opinions and you have some insight and you can really help us grow and scale this business. Um, and I've been, I've been CEO for the last, uh, the last three years and kind of really running the company for the last four. And, um, we've been, uh, it's been, uh, you know, not, not linear in terms of like the, the success, but we, we've, we've had a, a great deal of momentum and, and some really good big projects that I think articulate kind of what we're about in the space that we, that we're in. And can you, can you tell me a little bit about what you do, what three black dot does and kind of where you're, where you guys specialize, where the sweet, where the sweet spot is. I know it's, it, you're not pinned down exactly, but I know there's a yeah. focus on, on gaming, which is, which is important to your, why I wanted to talk to you about based on your background. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the, the way I, d- I describe it is, is, is uh, you know, just a next gen entertainment and, and, and media company. Um, and so um, we're really looking at communities and the communal connections and shared experiences of, of fans. Um, a lot of times that takes us into the gaming space because we feel that those dynamics amongst gaming, those kind of communal connections are, are, the, are the most pronounced. Um, but then as an entertainment studio, we really just kind of develop our ideas, you know, kind of backwards from that community um, and put that put that community kind of at the center. And then we give that community as many different opportunities to, to connect with each other and share in that experience across merchandising and books and scripted series and theatrical and digital content. And so in that capacity, you know, we're really kind of medium agnostic. Um, but we've had success in, in publishing and selling uh, you know, millions of books. We've had movies that have done you know tens of millions of, of, of box office. Um, we have shows in production at Universal and Hulu and Netflix. Um, so all the, the the sort of traditional outlets that you would expect from an entertainment studio. Um, but really, what we get excited about is our digital content and our ability to sort of stand up these these digital shows that are really. Uh, you know, kind of have an intimate relationship uh, with an audience that that kind of gives us that that sort of instant feedback and allows us to um, to really kind of stoke community versus kind of one off experiences that you typically see in, in entertainment and definitely in the movies. Yeah, is the are the um, is the digital content that you're building or is, or is that around? Are they built around a community or does the community form around the content because? Common yeah. interest, common love. Yeah, uh, that, that, that's a great question. Like we we um, we try to look for where where is there a conversation that's already happening. Um, a lot of times, those conversations are decentralized. They're they're they're, they're spread out, and, and 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 we go in and we see our job as the organizing force. Um, you know, so let's go in and organize this conversation. Let's give them the tokens and the places. Uh, and the and the and 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 really hold a mirror up to that community. Um, let's figure out the creators that are already kind of at the center, that have already been identified as kind of the leaders of that community, and let's go out and work with them to sort of build these content experiences um, and that can kind of serve as the lighthouse for a community and for a conversation that that's already happening. That's cool. Have you thought about? How, the relationship between the work you did planning parties and the work you do now that is about, you know, kind of bringing the energy of a group of people together in a, in a single location or around a single idea. Has that, have you thought much about that? Um, yeah. You know, I, I think there's a, there's a real parallel there. Um, you know, the, the, the thing about planning parties is that, um, it really is the intimacy, right? That, that emotional feedback that you get is instantaneous. You know, if people are having a good time, you know, if it's fun, um, you know, when, when people are walking out, if they're likely to come back again. Um, and I think specifically you, you, you sort of, you know, who they are. It's a very personal experience. You're seeing the people come in, you're trying to 
you know, talk to and see as many people, you know, kind of through the night to ensure that they're, they're having a good time. Um, for a long time in entertainment, that, that, that wasn't possible, right? Yeah. And so you had, you know, people or studios investing, you know, sort of hundreds of millions of dollars in these shows and they had no idea, you know, at a granular level, you know, who watched the show, why they watched it what they found most interesting. There was like, just no feedback. You just know if the people did or they didn't. Um, yeah. And that's so all, you, all you had was like a ratings yeah. number. That's all you had. You had a box office score and a ratings number. Did that's they watch it? it or not good. They watched it. Let's try to do something else like right. that. And that's oh, it. It must be the star. Let's make something else with that person. Let's make something else with the star. And so it's a, it's a really, you know, kind of arcane concept when you think about the, the, the sort of dollars at risk. And, and, and sort of, we, we, we sort of got stuck there. Um, but when you think about you sort of just drawing that, 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 that connectivity to, to sort of throwing a party, it's like, no, we, we do have the tools um, and the ability if we're willing to listen for, to do things that are kind of more, you know, kind of need based mm-hmm. to sort of tighten that feed, to tighten the feedback loop and, and just really understand if what we're, if what we're, what, what we're building or what we're putting out, if it's resonating. And if it's not, let's tweak it. Let's not be precious about like, no, this is our, you know, this is our creative vision and it has to be, there, there's, a, there's definitely a space for that. But, um, you know, that's, that's not where we, that's not where we live. We, we want to be really, really good listeners and very, very responsive to that audience and, you know, kind of let them be a part of that journey in terms of dictating kind of where that content experience goes. Um, and that's very analogous to, to, to a party. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because the, the energy can only grow if the people there are into it. Yeah, when DJ, they wait, turn the music. No yeah. one, you know, like you can, you know, no yeah. one's doing, you know, great, we need more, you know. <laughs> and, the, and the DJ gets the sense of like, oh, okay, I'm going to keep this going. I'm going to stay in this direction yeah. versus, okay, I need to change direction. This is, I need to shift it now. It's the yeah, same exactly. thing for, for creators. I guess I wonder if I look at like the, the spectrum of content and I see... <clears throat> You know, there are some auteurs that have their vision and they're going to dictate, this is what I'm doing, mm-hmm. you know, when you watch the Dune movie. Yeah. But there's a lot that are, if I look at creators who are doing their own individual content, um, primarily digital content, they are having that conversation and they're creating based on, oh, okay, this, this people really responded to this. I'm going to make more, I'm going to try to figure out what, I'm, what it was about that that they responded to. How do you, yeah. how do, you do that? Yeah, you know, I, I think um, I, I think I think entertainment and I would say Hollywood. I'll use Hollywood. Hollywood, you know, there's a there's a hierarchy between those two things, right? One is like the auteur, and it's it's Dune and Star Wars, and it's all of these great, fantastic kind of you know kind of cultural zeitgeisty things, which are which are hugely important. Um, and then it's the creator, and the creator is always kind of down here, yeah, um, or or a step below. And, you know, the way I think about it is that the, the responsibility um, on a creator um, is, is enormous because you're cause, because you are getting a scorecard every day or every other day or every third day. How, you know, how we're frequently, how many people watch this? How many people comment? They're giving you instant feedback. I hated this. This was great. Or I love this, you know, whatever it is. Um, and that's, that's that, that sort of scoreboard. Um, is a different type of pressure that the auteur doesn't have, right? Like that, that, that only, and this is happening on a, on a daily basis and it's measured increasingly, it's measured in, in millions, um, for the most successful creators. So you, you can imagine kind of what that, what that sense of pressure on a daily basis will, will do. Um, you know, for, for us, it's, it's really doing a lot of, lot of mining, um, in terms of understanding really understanding not someone's just initial response to something, but understanding the, the, the why um, of, 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 of why they viewed and, 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 and sort of what they get from it. Um, because it's usually not what you expect. Um, you know, some of it you can simplistically say like, oh, if someone watched this because it's, it's escapism. Um, but, then, but then, you know, in the, in the digital space, representation um, is, is very important people get an opportunity to select, to see, you know, people that, that look like themselves that, that, you know, may not have gotten the, the, the big screen break yet. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's something, or, you know, maybe it's a sense, um, 
maybe that, you know, watching that is just really important into their, their, their social connection that they have with their friend. And so, you know, watching that content just is really a means to be able to text their friend on the back end to say, Hey, did you do this? Did you see this? Yeah. Did you discuss this? That joke was that funny. You know, there's, there's, there's lots of different reasons that people come to, um, you know, kind of come to some of these content experiences and, 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 you know, what we found is that if you really, really understand those reasons and then serve those needs, they stick with you for a very, very long time. Um, and that, that sort of sense of purpose and that sense of understanding that kind of intimacy with the audience is what gives you the opportunity to, to kind of have impact. Um, and so that's what, that's, you know, that's a little bit of what, what we try to do. And it, the idea of tapping into culture and subculture is really interesting. And, and you guys have been really effective at finding those areas, uh, whether it's gaming and culture or just the content you're creating in general to, um, tap into those moments, those yeah. stories, those themes. And, you know, you said representation. I, I wonder if it's seeing people who look like me, but also seeing people who are interested in the same weird things that I'm interested in when it comes to gaming, it's treated like yeah. a niche, but games are like super, They're super huge. huge. Yeah. But, yeah. but yeah. it's treated like this thing that's like, Oh, Oh, gaming. Yeah. Right. But I mean, it's bigger right. than movies, especially yeah. with, with the down, the downshift from theaters. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not the sideshow anymore. It's the, it's the main event. Um, and, and, you know, I, I think, um, the, um, you know, we, we always have to be mindful. We always try to try to be mindful of that. Um, it, 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 it does go further than it does go further than, than representation that, you know, when we talk about gaming, we try to sort of tease it apart. So we're not talking about gaming as this monolith, but we're talking, we're talking about gaming as, as a passion that has influenced every other aspect of how someone sees the world. Yep. Um, and so, you know, kind of growing up, if gaming is your sort of predominant medium of entertainment, your, your sort of life choices about, you know, what you think is possible for a career or chances are they're very different. Um, you know, the, the, the steps that are required to get there, do you need college or not? Chances are, uh, you know, your passion of gaming and, and, and maybe the creators in the space and, 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 and what monetization means and, and, and sort of community and, and all of those things have been sort of changed, um, and influenced, um, by this passion around gaming. Um, and so to, to sort of kind of keep it in a box and say like, Oh, that's gaming. It is it, going to miss some very, very, uh, important connection points with that generation who have said, Hey, you know, I, you know, I, I, I like this, you know, more than music. I like this more than, than, than theater, you know, like that, those are some big, big, you know, generational shifts that I think if we, if we, if we treat it as just like the small thing, uh, you know, we're going to miss a lot of connection points. We're going to miss a lot of opportunities to, to sort of resonate with the, with the people who feel that way. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the way cut scenes have influenced movie making the way that you know, it's changed everything. Yeah. yeah. It really yeah. has changed the way we tell stories digitally. Yeah. And, 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 and we have to, I think, um, you know, we, we, we have to, um, you know, I think it's, it's very important to just to, 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 to be mindful and, and be accepting of, uh, the preferences, um, and, and, and know, and know that those preferences, um, a lot of times are, 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 are being driven, um, by, by very kind of big, meaningful, um, you know, kind of cultural shifts. Um, that are, that are the sort of things that are kind of easy to miss if, if you, if you, if you approach them with too much, you know, kind of too much judgment. Hmm. Yeah. You have to come into any community with an open mind to try to figure out what's, what's happening under the surface versus what it looks like as an outsider looking at, you know, absolutely esports or any other thing. Yeah. When absolutely. you see creators in the gaming space and, the, and you work with them, mm. you know, there have been platforms that have been stood up. You know, Twitch is, is the first one that mostly comes to mind for me. But it seems like there is a, uh, a movement for creators to find ways outside of that. Not that Twitch is going away and not that they don't want to be on Twitch yeah. or YouTube or wherever else. 
mm-hmm. but that it seems like they are finding ways to own their their own platform or build on it a little bit. What are you seeing there? What have you What have you noticed in that trend? Yeah, yeah. I think. Um, um, yeah, I think I very much I agree that that that's the trend. That's that's the direction of travel. Um, but I, I think it's driven. I think that it really is driven out of a, 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 a wider, deeper kind of cultural shift that we're seeing where um, I think the platforms um, and, and in the way that they've sort of um, sort of flattened some of the experiences um, and then also kind of dictate, uh, you know, kind of what is seen and what isn't seen. Um, yeah, and what's what's rewarded and what isn't for a creator. What's and rewarded an, and an audience and, and an audience and, and an audience as well. I, I think I think that's a I think that's getting to a place for both, you know, not just the creators, but but also the 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 the, the, the fans and the audience of saying like, hey, you know, we really like this, but we'd like to have more agency in it. Mm-hmm. And I think I think across all of our lives, when we think about some of these huge sort of mega trends that everyone's talking about, whether it's in the creator space or whether it's you know, whether it's sort of web three, um, or whether it's, it's, it's work from home, you know, I, I think, I think people are sort of saying like, Hey, you know, this has been great. You know, this wave of technology, um, and, and, and connection has been really, really good. But as we see it get more and more centralized and aggregated, we want to have more agency in it. And I think what you're saying is like, just basically whole communities of fans saying, we believe so much that we want to have more agency and how we consume the content um, that we're willing to pay for something that we, that we know we could otherwise get for free or mm-hmm. that we know would, would sort of more traditionally be ad supported, but we're willing to, to pay for the quieter space. We're willing to pay for a space that sort of feels like it's uniquely ours. And, and, I, and I think that, you know, creators, you know, rather than sort of driving that migration, I think they're just responding to, to, to fans and audiences saying that, you know, hey, that sense of agency is valuable to us. Um, and, and, and by the way, here's, here's five bucks a month or here's 10 bucks a month to make sure that you, you continue to do that, to give it and, you know, give us that content in a space where we feel uh, like, like, where, where we feel that sort of promotes the greatest sense of belonging and ownership, you know, in this community that we, that we've chosen to be a part of. Yeah. And that's a very powerful force. And it's such a shift from the Instagram influencer culture where it's got to be every third piece of content is a, is a paid promotion with a, you know, or a partnership or a sponsorship. Now the yeah. creator is like, Oh, okay. Now I can get paid to do the things that they really like that. I love that doing. Really, and now it's more, that I love doing yeah, it's more yeah. of a dialogue than that. Yeah, absolutely. You don't have to worry so much about about you know sort of the algorithm and 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 following trends. You don't have to worry so much about about SEO. Um, and if you came to prominence as a creator and and um, and, and and sort of creating like really you know sort of differentiated experiences, um, uh, platforms are you know sort of for better or for worse, they're not the place for differentiated experiences. Um, you know, they, they, they kind of need everything to sort of, uh, you know, be, be sort of flat and they need to have the ability to, to serve you sort of similar experiences. If you like this, let me make sure that there's 20 more things exactly like this to keep you, you know, keep you engaged and sort of keep you on the platform. Um, I, I think I think from a from a humanistic standpoint, I think fans and audiences are saying, "Hey, we want a little bit more." Um, you know, that's not the the sort of depth of experience, engagement, and the community that we find um, is 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 sort of sufficient. Um, and, and and increasingly, to your point, that's happening in in, in quieter spaces. Um, the, what do you think it is that's driving that trend? Is it they want to be able to build a more of a communal relationship with around with the creator and with the other people that like the creator and that and the what they're making or is it they just want an escape from, you know, rectangles or is it, you know, what what do you think's driving that? Yeah, I think um you know, I, I, I really, I really do think that there's this, this, uh, 
this this sort of more primal, uh, you know, deeper uh, humanistic uh, uh, pool that is is sort of rejecting the, the form factor and, and the formats um, that a platform requires from a mm-hmm. standardization standpoint. I really do. I think. I think TikTok is great. I'm just as guilty as anyone else of going on TikTok and 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 you know quickly wasting a half hour. We all are. Yeah. Um, if, <laughs> if, if, if you, <laughs> you know, but if you told me that that's the that's the totality of my you know my you know kind of storytelling experience, or you know that's the that's the totality of my entertainment experience, that's not very satisfying. Um, and I, you know, I think they they come up with a new form factor that has sort of extended the run of, um, you know, of 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 kind of ways to sort of engage on a platform. But if you had to ask me, um, you know, the, the 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 sort of you know tailwind um, for taking control of those experiences and 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 putting them in a way where you can sort of dictate it as an individual or as a creator or as in a community uh, or as a, as a, a, a part of that audience, um, that, that tailwind is, is, is basically a humanistic revolt that's saying like, no, you know, that's good, but it, you know, it's, it's not sufficient. Um, we, we, we want more, we deserve more, uh, you know, having more control feels more satisfying. And are you see, is that similar in gaming cultures and watching gaming creators as it is elsewhere? Are you seeing that trend in other kind of areas of creativity and other communities? Yeah, I think, um, I think, um, you know, where, um, a lot of times I think it's, 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 I do think it's in other activities. Um, and I think we see, um, we see those communities looking to, um, kind of when you go off platform it's much more of a piecemeal experience right and so um you know some of the communities that we're a part of or that we follow um you know there's a uh you know there's a discord server just to throw out you know you you have a discord server and and um and then maybe there's a a video kind of uh you know either a how-to video or a tips video um or um, or just a piece of entertainment um, that's in another, you know, another kind of play out window. Um, and then, and then you have a, um, um, and then you have a, uh, a a place where you go to, to transact, you know, maybe it's an e-com place or, or maybe it's, it's, it's in, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, um, you know, just a, a peer to peer financial transaction place. Um, you know, and, or, or maybe it's, you know, you know, open sea, if it's, if it's a, you know, a digital token, um, I think all of these places are kind of slowly, you know, kind of saying like, Hey, communities, whether you're trading sneakers or you are, you know, buying, you know, buying crypto, um, or you just want to learn more about, uh, you know, a, a, a way to, uh, you know, resale clothing. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of these, I think a lot of these communities are finding that, Hey, you know, we can have a more robust experience, but we, but we're basically, um, we need to sort of glue together, uh, the places where that communication happens and, and where the community meets, um, which is a, which anytime I think a community is sort of adding friction, they're making it more complicated to do something. It's a very, very sort of strong statement that what's there, uh, you know, is it's not fully kind of meeting the need. Yeah. And it's interesting that the list of the the pieces that pop up around a community as as we're talking about moving off and moving beyond the what quote unquote traditional platforms is really funny because when you started saying Discord and a P2P and I was like, oh, yeah, and then each of those gets their own mores and their own traditions and their own kind of limitations. And so those will be the next platforms. And then we'll go to the next thing. That's like, let's get away from <laughs> discord and let's get, a, you know, like yeah, I, used to say, yeah. I used to say, if someone says Pinterest, you kind of get a picture in your mind of what the content looks like. And if someone mm-hmm. said, if you think about the original Instagram versus Instagram, now you kind of get a picture of both of those. 
<clears throat> but it's like if I say only fans, they're like, oh yeah, I, I definitely get a visceral <laughs> like I know what you're talking about. <laughs> right, that, right. None of those things are really good for a, for right. a creator that wants to be free from limitations. Yeah. You know, Discord yeah. too. When you said Discord, I was like, oh, we're going to talk about NFTs. <clears throat> that's not that's not great. <clears throat> yeah. I don't think that's not what Discord was intending when they started years before NFTs. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's funny you say that. I think your observation is it's really spot on. I mean, I think you know the you know we we have this pool for you know we want agency, we want more control, um, but that comes with a lot of friction. And, you know, it comes with a, a lot more work on a relative basis than just a platform. And so the movement to then sort of re-aggregate all of the stuff um, into something that feels centralized. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely be, you know, at the end of this, <laughs> <laughs> at the end of this period. Uh, and, and so I, I have no doubt that that'll, that'll be the case. We're just, we're just in a period now where I think the allure of, um, of, of decentralization has really, really taken hold. And I, you know, and, and it's like, you know, for me, when I think about, you know, when I'm working and interacting with 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 our staff and i'm hearing their opinions on on work from home um or um you know or and and then and then looking at how that's playing out in in sort of other realms and and in terms of whether it's whether it's web3 or or it's you know risa like all of those things sort of neatly align which tell me tells me that we're we're sort of we're dealing with something that's like much bigger than than you know, someone preferring you know this this communication portal versus another. Yeah, that's interesting. It's it's a macro trend overall that people are looking to unshuffle the deck here and, uh, and take space from that central core of, of you're going to tell me the place I have to be to do the thing I need to do. No, yeah, I'm going to uh, do it this way that. from my house, or I'm going to use this platform. Yeah. They, you know what? Uh, uh, it, what do they say? There's only two media models: bundling and unbundling. You know, I guess we're, <laughs> right. we're in an unbundling space right now. We're in, a, we're in an unbundling space, right? And I think each time, you know, each time bundling, unbundling, I, I, I like that. Um, but, you know, we, we learn a little bit. We learn a little bit more. Um, and, I, and I do think we get the opportunity to, to sort of understand what's important to people uh, and, and a, with a little bit greater sort of depth of meaning um, in, in whatever we're doing. And then, you know, hopefully the rebundling um, you know, happens in a more, in a more thoughtful way. Um, I think that's probably the, you know, that's the, that's the hope. Do you think it will yield more smaller platforms or do you think that it will end up with like just as many, you know, two or three big winners? Like we, like, it seems like the cycle usually dictates. Yeah. You know, I, I, I you know, there's a lot of, a lot of sort of theories about this, but, you know, I, I, the, um, it's, it's very hard to argue that when, um, you know, when you have these sort of completely, you know, frictionless experiences, um, and people can, you know, just by typing in the URL or, or clicking on an icon or tapping on some tapping on your, on your cell phone, when it's that easy to do, um, it, it, it's hard not to, to see a world where, that gets concentrated, um, where there's re really no real um, kind of barriers. Um, you know, those those tend to lead into and in, in, in a concentration, and so and I, and I think for good reason because uh, you know for you know the, the the plus of it is that things get automated. You know, and things get things get easier and 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 sort of faster, and we don't have to worry about the things that you know everything gets sort of everything can just become uh, the user experience that, that we enjoy and, and that, we're, that we're sort of looking for without doing any of the work that it takes to, to, to and you know, that's what, that's what platforms are, are, are generally good for. So I do think we'll see a, we'll see a concentration. Yeah, because I, I think um, TikTok is the proof that the frictionless for you page will just keep me there for 30 minutes. It's you can look at right. my, you can look at my history right. and it'll be like, oh yeah, that right. that works. But yeah, just keep it coming. Gaming is almost the proof of the opposite that people are invested in games because they're challenging and because you have to figure it out and because you have to cooperate with other people and figure out how to, you know, whatever, whether it's esports or playing casually. 
there's you have to invest mental energy into doing it and that's what makes you fall in love with the game and join the community versus turning on the tv and just being like all right well let's watch this episode of star trek from 20 years ago which is also satisfying but in a different way yeah much different way yeah it's, it's by far it's such a such an interactive medium um that that sort of combines um you know it combines that that sort of always on uh uh um, sort of mentality that you that you know that sort of sports dips into a little bit where you know you you sort of you're you're a football fan you may be talk, talking about your team throughout the week and and then you know you watch the game on Sunday and then and then you can you know read your articles and you know wear your jersey and talk to your your friends about it you know it's like a, a you know kind of a nice always on cycle there I think gaming is, is, is sort of the same way in that, you know, the, the, the mission for completion and the immersion immersion, um, and increasingly the, the sort of social dynamics of it um, creates this, this, this sort of always on where it's mm-hmm. always in the back of the back of your mind um, until you get to that sense of completion, um, if ever. Um, and, and increasingly it's, 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 it's right there, you know, kind of in your pocket. Um, which is, which has driven a lot of the, the growth in gaming. And so I think that's, um, you know, that's a really powerful, um, that's a really powerful kind of entertainment or form or expression of entertainment, um, that is not easily, uh, you can't easily replicate and, you know, kind of in, in, in a movie, you can't give, you can't really give someone agency in a movie, or maybe that's what the, you know, maybe that's what that's what Meta and, and the Metaverse is, yeah, is, or, is or about. Netflix but, tried it with Bandersnatch, right? <laughs> or the Bandersnatch that sort of choose your own adventure stuff. But that's 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 you know that's that's difficult. So that's why I think you know that's why I think gaming is just definitely here to stay. And, and you know, gaming has absolutely raised the bar of, of of what 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 a whole generation kind of expects for their from their entertainment experiences. Absolutely, um, Reginald, this was fantastic. Thank you so much for making time for me. I really appreciate it. No, thanks for having me. This this is this has been great. I uh, love the conversation. Yeah, Anytime. Cool to work. Cool to work through these things with you and hear your uh, experience kind of shining through. Where can uh, where can people find you online? Yeah, I'll 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 say find find three black dot. Um, so it's the, the number three B L A C K D O T. We're doing some cool entertainment experiences. Uh, three black dot.com um, lots of good stuff happening in 2022 and excited to um, excited to share the stuff that we're working on with the world um, we're, we're really really proud of uh, you know kind of the why behind behind our work and, and we do it with a great deal of intentionality and, and, and for the right reason so three black dot.com yeah really cool I will link to that obviously in the show notes but uh, thanks again for making time for me thanks Adam so long. okay bye Strategy Inside Everything is produced by me, Adam Kierno. If you liked what you heard, please leave a review wherever you listen to your podcast. It really helps. For more information about me, Adam Kierno, you can go to adamkierno.com. There's information about my books, my speaking, and my strategy work. Have an idea for a guest? Send it my way. Just go to adamkierno.com and you'll find a form there that'll help you connect. Thanks for listening.